Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today what we'll do is we'll go in and take a look at the ESP32 cams that everyone is making videos about lately as well. Um, it seems like it is picking up quite some steam. Um, what we'll do today is we'll take a look at how to add it to Home Assistant and maybe how to get the best performance we can possibly can get or the best way that I have found adding it to Home Assistant. So there's a few different ways. Um, the most popular way of adding it is using ESP Home, but I may be looking at adding it in a different way. So with that said, let's go in and take a look. Okay, so back in Home Assistant, and as you can see, everything looks fairly similar to the last time that we left it out. Um, the only thing that may be a bit different is you would see that there is a additional add-on that I added in here. It's Motion Eye. Now these are all default that comes with um, Home Assistant. So if you do go to your supervisor and click on Add-on Store, you should have Motion Eye listed under the Community Add-ons, and you'll be able to just install it straight from there. Fairly straightforward setting it up. So I'm not going to go into deep into that. I do have a video showing you how to install these as well. So up until this point, I only have two of these. Um, they're exactly the same. I haven't tested different models or makes of these boards, but they all should be fairly similar in the way that they function. One thing to do keep in mind is that these boards can get hot. So um, just be mindful of that, especially if you're going to up the resolution on these things. So two main tutorials that's on here. The first one is going to be ESP Homes, obviously. Now, this is a very good one. Um, everything works fine on here. So if you get to this specific page, I'll leave it in the description as well. I do have videos showing how to add all the information to ESP Home, and we'll take a look at the code that I have in there as well. So fairly simple. There's a few different models, as I've said. So you can select the AI Tinker the M5 stack. And as you can see, they do give a warning about the overheating as well. And then you have the Woover and the TTGO cameras. So those are the main ones that's in here. And for the most part, you can just go in and copy the code exactly as it is. These example ones, they would work perfectly. Um, I think I have a Woover kit. If I'm not mistaken, I'll just double check, check on that. And to add this into Home Assistant, it's extremely simple we copy the code um, and go to our ESP home and as you can see I do have the cam right here as well so I can just edit this and this will give us all the information that I added so as you can see the only thing that you usually would change in here is going to be the resolution right here so that you can change depending on the frame rate that you're receiving now guys, you have to remember these things are incredibly cheap, so they don't have, they are quite limited in some ways, and we will get to discussing that as well. Then your JPEG quality is obviously just a still image quality, so you can set that, I think 10 is the max. And then you also do have that option to add in some additional sensors because it is an ESP and you do have the additional. So I just added in the touch just to see and test to see how it works. So. That's all I have in here for my code. Now to upload it, it is a bit different. You need to use a USB programmer. We did have uh, that previously. I showed you guys how to do that as well. So once you have all that, um, the way to connect it up to upload your code, there is a different tutorial in here as well from random tutorials. This is a really, really good tutorial and I much more prefer using uh, setting up the camera for streaming this way than using it the ESP home ways. So, and I'll show you guys the different results that we get as well. So in here, also fairly simple setup. They do have a tutorial explaining exactly how to set this up. So you can come in here, just follow this guy. I'll leave a link to them as well down below in the description but basically what we'll do is we'll just install the code right here using Arduino instead and then they have in here a way showing you how you need to connect up these boards so fairly simple they explain everything really clean um, so it's fairly simple to follow once you have that you installed your boards it'll look you can just copy the code in here one thing I did not see them mention in here is the frame size 
So right here you see you have that frame size. That's going to be the resolution of the camera and I think they left it as default. This code is going to limit you to only have one stream open at a time, but I'll show you a different way how we can bypass that. Um, but in here, we can go in and set that frame size right here. So if you don't know the exact resolution, easy way to find that is by going back to the ESP home configuration. And if you scroll a bit, it'll give you all of them right in here. So if you copy any of these and then just paste it in right here, so in the frame size. So if it's having issues with this frame size, it'll automatically um, fall back to the next one in here. That's it for this specific one. So once you've uploaded this, you can just follow the tutorial exactly step by step. Um, they do add it in a different way into Home Assistant as well. Um, we'll get to that. So let's compare the two cameras. So I haven't shown you guys yet, but if we go in here, adding this this camera from ESP Home is obviously really simple. You just add it in, but as you can see, the frame rate is really, yeah, it's not that nice. It is working, but um yeah remember it's extremely cheap so you don't need to expect much from it then the other one from uh, random tutorials if we take a look at that and i did set the resolutions for both of these exactly the same um i added it to motion i instead so i used that ip address and added it directly and as you can see that is way better um giving way better results than it is giving from the ESP itself. Now, one thing you do need to remember is if we are going to use it this way from um, this specific tutorial, the random tutorials one, you won't be able to make use of the additional pins on the ESP unless you modify the code that they have provided and add some MQTT support in here as well. So obviously once you have motion on here, it's fairly simple setting this up. Um, all you would do is you would just add the camera and add in the IP address that's assigned to the ESP from the Arduino. So once you upload the code and it connects to Wi-Fi, it'll get an IP address and the only thing you need to do is add that in there. So once we're in MotionEye and we've added in the camera to get this to show up on your dashboard or in Home Assistant as an actual entity, maybe you want to send a snapshot or a screenshot or have a display any information. Or if you have it set up like I do um, with a different server, so my MotionEye is running on a different server and you want to bring that camera into Home Assistant, um, what you'll do is if we click right here on the settings of this specific camera, we have the IP address that we added in here. Then under video streaming right here, if we click on snapshot URL, it'll give us a snapshot URL and then we also get a streaming URL. So what we'll do is in our home assistant, we'll go into our configuration.yaml. We'll add a new line for camera if you don't have any one in there yet platform is mjpeg the name of the camera and then in the still image url we'll use the snapshot url right there right here so this is one that's coming from my server so we'll just update that real quick and then in the streaming url we'll add the streaming url of our camera in motion eye so go in update this real quick, save it, and then restart Home Assistant. So I'm going to restart that and then I'll get back to you after it's finished. Okay, so it looks like Home Assistant restarted. So if we go back to Home again, um, we should see the camera show up. So if we click on this one right here, there we go. And as you can see, everything is working and this one has a way, way, way better frame rate than the ESP home one which is terrible. I mean, it's there's really no comparison 
deep differences. As I've said, I don't know much about coding Arduino or how to use uh, or implementing a lot of um, custom sensors using um, someone else's code in here. But you can go ahead and set it up this way instead. This is the best one that I've gotten to work so far. I've tested a bunch of different solutions and different options. But to this point, the best way of setting it up is using the code from Random Tutorials. I'll leave this down below. You can follow this guide exactly. Add it in um, just by adding the add-on motion eye. Now... A few things you guys need to keep in mind is a Raspberry Pi is extremely low powered. And if you are going to add a bunch of these cameras into MotionEye, you are going to run into problems. So you will get frame drops and the frame rate will not be as high as it is in this one right here. So keep that in mind guys. Also. As you can see, the quality is not that good. Obviously, it is very dark in the room that I'm currently in. But there's a lot of downsides to using the ESP32 cam instead of using an actual camera. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, I know I may not sound very positive or enthusiastic about it. Don't get me wrong, the, ca the ESP32 uh, cam boards are amazing and they do have potential and there is definitely a space for them. Um, however, the way most people are using them at the moment, I think it may give them the wrong impression of the actual capabilities of that little board and trying to do image processing. For IP cameras, surveillance cameras, it's not really a use case that I would recommend using. It is great, it'll work. Um, if you don't have anything else, it is extremely cheap, so that's the main thing. Getting something so small and with so many functions for so cheap, it's phenomenal, to put it that way. And I think that's what's causing the massive hype around these boards. But um, there is a lot of additional things you can do. They do have like um, facial recognition and that's maybe features that you can use instead of trying to use the actual camera and set it up as a streaming cam, um, making use of all of those cores um, because those are dual core boards. So um, using it for something else instead of IP cameras, you can still make a lot of use of that camera. So that's just my opinion, guys. Um, I know a lot of... People are going hype and creating major hype around this. And it is very good, but I don't want to give people the wrong impression of using the ESP32 cam as an actual IP camera or a security camera. But with that said, I'm going to leave you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.